I'm working at NIH, National Eye Institute, per se, in the Division of Extramural Research. And I take care of the training grants and training pertaining to all the young students, graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, uh, residents, and, and clinical fellows, and young assistant professors. In that capacity, I take care of the fellowships, career development awards, and other institutional training grants like uh, uh, T32s and K12s. And besides that, I also uh, manage a portfolio for translational research. Those are big ticket grants known as R24 in NIH uh, nomenclature. And uh, those are translational grants pertaining to from, from bench side to the bedside research. And in that, we ask only the animal work uh, pertaining to any particular eye disease. And uh, you are not required to have any human clinical data in there, but you can include that. So it's more like a proof of uh, concept grant. And from there, you, we expect that you are able to submit a IND to FDA. So before coming to NIH, I was uh, uh, working at the uh, University of North Texas Health Science Center in Texas, and I was there for 16 years. And, and before that, I was at UT Health Science Center in San Antonio for five years. So um, I started eye research uh, under the tutelage of David Papermaster uh, up at UT Health Science Center in San Antonio. And he is a very well-known eye researcher, and he, he introduced me to retina. And, uh, and so in Texas, I mean, I was involved in retinal degeneration as well as glaucoma research. And uh, retinal degeneration pertaining to uh, retinitis pigmentosa per se, and then uh, using animal models. And then glaucoma research I was involved was how the ganglion cells they die in glaucoma. So glaucoma is a type of optic neuropathy. It's a progressive optic neuropathy. In that uh, retinal ganglion cells, they die via apoptosis slowly. So we were trying to understand uh, the mechanisms uh, behind the apoptosis of retinal ganglion cell. Besides that, I was also involved in some neuroprotective research, uh, trying to uh, use a small molecules to see if these dying retinal ganglion cells, we can save them from dying and save the vision. Because uh, for any disease, I mean, you, whether, you know, cancer or, or eye disease, you know, per se, so you need to have an animal model where you can do and mimic what's happening in humans. So it's not you know, possible for us to go directly to the human. So we have to develop, you know, so, so for those disease models, we can have cultured cells as well as animal models or transgenic animal models or knockout mo models if you have a particular protein to learn their effect, uh, what it does uh, to that, you know, in that particular disease. So. So we need animal models. So, so animal models are very important for us to move forward. So for glaucoma, we have a number of animal models. Like, for example, one of the most popular models is known as the John Morrison model. And in that model, what you do is you inject uh, a hypertonic saline via AP scleral vein in the front of the eye, in the anterior chamber of the eye. And so what it does is it clocks uh, the, the venous flow of the aqueous humor, and then uh, it uh, results into uh, elevated intraocular pressure, which is one of the hallmarks of glaucoma. It's one of the very important. And, and all the present day uh, medication are geared towards lowering the intraocular pressure in, in the human subject. So that's one model. And there are other models also like you, instead of injecting hypertonic saline, you inject uh, microbeads. So that will again clog the, the outflow of aqueous humor and resulting into high intraocular pressure. And there is another model in which you do laser treatment in, in the interior chamber and then it results into the same process. 
So, so, so these animal models are really, really important. And for retinal degeneration, similarly, you have spontaneous mutations in the photoreceptor cells of the retina. And there are a number of uh, spontaneous, like RDS model or RD model or RCS rat model. And now with the advent of uh, understanding all the mutations uh, involved in all these retinal degenerative diseases, so we have been able to create transgenic uh, mice and rat models. And there are a number of other dog models to study the disease.